Welcome to the weekday report for Tuesday, August 13th. I'm Joe Potente. Here's a brief look at the news. After nearly four hours of discussion and public comment, the City Parks Commission voted Monday night to maintain the 7 p.m. nightly closing time on Kennedy Drive. Alderman Kevin Mathewson broached a proposal to allow traffic on the road until 10 p.m. when surrounding Kennedy Park closes, but the commission voted 3 to 1 in favor of a competing measure by Alderman Rocco Lamacchia Sr. to maintain the status quo at least until a park master plan is completed next year. Police Chief John Morrissey argued against a later closing time, noting a dramatic drop in police calls to the area since the 7 p.m. curfew went into effect in 2001. The Kenosha Education Association is looking to retain and attract members following the end of its collective bargaining agreement in June. Union officials said Monday they are in the process of scheduling meeting opportunities for members while continuing grassroots efforts to address education issues. Over the last two years, teachers' union membership statewide has dropped to 70 percent since a state law curtailing collective bargaining took effect two years ago, according to the Wisconsin Education Association Council. Shopping for school supplies picked up this week as some public schools have begun classes while other private schools start before the end of the month. Pens, pencils, crayons, markers, and notebooks tend to be the staples, according to parents shopping for children in Kenosha. Among this year's most fashion-trendy items, at Target, for instance, are school supplies and lunch boxes with the brand of the English-Irish boy band One Direction. According to Target store officials, shopping is expected to peak next week as public school districts start school September 3rd. The Coast Guard has a new rescue boat in Kenosha's Harbor. Rachel Schaff has more in this report. I'm on the U.S. Coast Guard's new response boat. It's 45 feet, um, a big difference to the 41-foot boat that it's going to be replacing. The officer in charge, Colleen McCarthy, said that it, the, a lot of the features are going to benefit the Kenosha Coast Guard. Well, one of the reasons why we can use the features well is mm -hmm. to be able to re respond to matters in distress quicker, to arrive on scene faster, and to be able to stay on scene searching longer. Um, there's also a lot of technology features that will uh, benefit the the Coast Guard, and um, they are training on it for the next six weeks, and in mid-September they should be able to use it. Um, the old boat will be retired in Milwaukee. For the Kenosha News, I'm Rachel Schaff. Thanks, Rachel. Police are looking for a man whom they believe fled to Kenosha after abducting a woman from a Mount Pleasant motel early Sunday. 24-year-old Jonathan C. Harris is 5 feet 6 to 5 feet 9 inches tall and 150 to 170 pounds. He was last seen wearing blue jeans, a blue shirt, and a white baseball cap. Police are also trying to locate the woman to check on her welfare. Anyone with information about the incident is asked to call police. It's time for another summer tradition. The Kenosha County Fair begins Wednesday and continues through Sunday at the fairgrounds in Wilmot. Wednesday's highlights will include a full day of livestock judging, a truck and tractor pull and farm combine demo derby, and the crowning of the fairest of the fair. What's trending today? Should convicted drug offenders be subject to long minimum mandatory sentences? Attorney General Eric Holder doesn't think so. He's asked federal prosecutors to stop charging many nonviolent drug defendants with offenses that carry mandatory minimums. What do you think? Weigh in on our Facebook page. Up next is Rachel Schaff with a look at a new garden program at the Kenosha Achievement Center. Hi, I'm Rachel Schaff from the Kenosha News. Today we're at the Kenosha Achievement Center with Darlene Duncan, the program director. They have a garden program right now uh, going on where their consumers are gardening, weeding, watering, and then they sell it at the Kenosha Farmers Market in Columbus Park every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, Darlene, so have they, what have they been learning? Um, the consumers have been learning all kinds of things since the program started in March. Um, they've learned how to plant seeds in the cells and trays, um, how plants grow, different kinds of vegetables, mm -hmm. uh, planting, uh, soil composition and compost, um, you name it, they've been learning it. It's just incredible the way this garden has taken off and grown with their um, excitement about being involved in this program. For the Kenosha News, I'm Rachel Schaff. Thanks, Rachel. Now here's a look at what we're working on today. Rachel Schaff is headed out to the county fairgrounds to check out fair setup. She'll be out there the rest of the week to cover the fair. And Jill Roselle is going to the Brighton School Board meeting for the introduction of the district's new administrator. 
Pick up a copy of the Kenosha News and check kenoshanews.com for all the details on these stories and more. I'm Joe Potente with the Weekday Report.